Welcome everybody. In case you can't recognize uh, what's on the screen, this is what a cupcake looks like when it's gone really, really bad. Granted, this is an artistic photo, but um, if you're wondering what you can do so that your cupcakes don't turn into this, I think we have some tips and tricks for you. Hello, my name is George Kremelev and I'm Marketing Specialist for A4E. And my name is Christopher Jonov and I'm CEO of the company. And together we're trying to, uh, we'll, we'll show you how you can uh, make your planning of your pastry businesses better. As you know, one of the toughest problems in the bakery and pastry businesses is not baking the goods, but actually baking just the right amount of goods. Uh, so that you don't throw anything out at the end of the day and um, you're able to help every customer that walks through your doors. At A3, we have found a few specific measurable things that impact pastry sales on a day-to-day -day basis and we'd like to share those with you in the next 30 to 40 minutes. Um, those include things like the weather, uh, like uh, local holidays and the birthdays in the region of, of your sales locations. Um, <clears throat> First, let me show you um, how we found about those things and who we are, and then uh, we're going to dive deeper. So, um, our company, A4E, uh, which stands, by the way, for Analytics for Everyone, is trying to democratize the analytical services, which is a really fancy way of saying that uh, we're helping mad geeks turn uh, mathematical solutions into helpful solutions for small businesses and without charging through the nose. So, um, how, we, uh, how we manage to do that is we actually um, make sure that the tools that the geeks produce are reusable so that they, are, uh, they can be applied to not just one business, which is how typically uh, mathematician analysis work, but um, that are capable to be used by different, uh, different companies. Uh, we usually use for that external analysts, but in this particular case, we were approached by a specific customer, and we'll share who that is in a moment. Um, and we built this as a proof of concept. And the findings were so overwhelming that we wanted to share this with you. A few things before uh, we really start. Um, logistics. Um, we have a live chat going down in the right corner of your screens where you can ask questions. Um, and somebody is monitoring those, uh, uh, those chats right now and we'll be able to extract the most interesting and the most common questions and we'll um, give them to us so that we can answer while we're going through the talk. And if you want to take notes, that's fine. Uh, but we will send you after the uh, talk all the materials. That will include this recording, it will include the slides, it will include uh, a few other goodies that we have prepared for you, and uh, hopefully um, s some other insights. We will also be sending you a, a survey, thanks to those of you who answered the survey before the uh, webinar, um, but we will send you another one at the end to see how we've done and what we can do to improve for the next time. Right, so going deeper into uh, in what we're going to talk today. Um, first, we're going to mention who the customer is and um, what they do um, and how they actually came up uh, with the problem that, uh, that they wanted to, uh, to solve how we approached it initially, what did we do, how, you know, what our, you know, curving path was and um, the things that we found along the way. And, um, of course, what, is, what was the outcome? What did we achieve at the end? Um, of course, we're going to talk about the things that are most interesting to you, the takeaways, the things that um, we think that you can take and utilize in your day-to-day planning of your sales, things that can help you judge, okay, should I increase more the supply now or should I decrease it because, you know, tomorrow's going to be a slow day and, and so on. Um, and while talking about these things uh, and doing them for our customer, we created a couple of tools um, that we're going to uh, talk a bit about today. Um, the first one is um, uh, called A for Bakery's Light, which is uh, going to help you minimize the waste. And if I'm able to sell you on the second one, A for Bakeries, you didn't expect any free uh, webinar to not have a sales pitch at the end, did you? So if I'm able to sell you, uh, that is actually what is going to take you to the, your planning to the next level um, with uh, 
full power of predictive analytics. Great, so the customer. The customer is called Nedelia, which is basically translated as Sunday. Um, and what they do is they retail pastries, cakes mostly, um, but they also s sell a few other perishable goods. They've been in business for about 20 years and they do end-to-end, uh, -end. so basically they manufacture the cakes, they distribute them to their locations, they have over 30 locations uh, in the country, uh, but also a few international locations, so they're kind of growing at this moment. Um, so they manufacture, they distribute them, and they sell them in each uh, of their locations. Um, like you see here in this picture, they have inside locations, inside shopping malls. Uh, they also do have locations that are um, outside, so external seating areas. Their um, manufactured products are about 40, the, the ones that they care about, you know, slightly more than 40. Um, they have cakes and they have um, some um, savory uh, treats as well. Um, and one thing that is interesting is that they sell those uh, whole as well as by the piece. So they sell them, you know, a customer comes in, um, they have only a whole cake, customer wants to buy just a piece, they cut it right there in the, in the retail location and they uh, sell to the customer. Uh, apart from that, they have about 150 uh, or so other products like Cokes, coffee, um, teas and, uh, and other um, supporting products. Um, the frequency of their sales, as you can imagine, is, is quite high, you know, the daily coffee, the afternoon tea, um, people treat themselves weekly to, cut to cakes and, and that's, that's, so basically that's the, the customer. They, they sell cakes, uh, other pastries, uh, a little bit savory uh, treats. What did they wanted to achieve? Their stated goal at the beginning of this exercise was, we are opening new locations and um, gosh, it takes a long time to, to make one of those profitable. You know, how can we make it a little bit more interesting for, uh, or a little bit easier for us to kind of open new locations? Um, and, you know, uh, just so you're kind of aware how they operate, uh, basically they have their managers, their location managers, who kind of go in uh, day in and day out. They, they do the ordering, they do uh, oversight of all the staff, they manage the local uh, suppliers for things like coffees and teas, um, you know, cleaning, you know, basic, basic management of the, of the premise, of the, of the uh, uh, location. It takes about six to 12 months to become really productive and to turn a location into a profitable one. And that, as you can imagine, is a lot of investment. So, so the customer said, we want to estimate the demand because we want to shorten up the ramp up time. Um, sales optimizations wasn't very high on their list. You know, they were thinking that their current locations are doing just fine as they are. They don't, you know, they weren't thinking about any additional, um, any additional um, sales or kind of reducing the waste. So we said, okay, great, let's, let's see what we've got. So we started by looking at their data. And something that you should understand about analytics, if, you, if you're not kind of familiar with it already, is that analytics works on data. Data is the gold mine of your uh, business. And, and data is every single thing you do. Every transaction, every, every sale, every um, vendor that you contact and you get and you purchase something from, that, that's your data. Um, Typically, business that, businesses that have been around for a lot of years have grown to appreciate that data and do some anal uh, analysis on that. They have some, probably some finance people, especially if they're slightly bigger, have a few, few more locations. Uh, but data is the gold mine that we use to, to do that. We took their data, we cleaned it up. Uh, that is a whole lengthy process because, as you can imagine, through, throughout the years, they, they, they change a few things here and there. So we, we did that kind of dirty work for them. And we started using them on our basic application, A for Coffee Shops. That application uh, allowed us to see a few things right off the bat. First, data for the whole chain is not really meaningful. I mean, it's meaningful, but for other things. It is um, much more interesting, though, to look at the data per location. So we basically said, okay, how, what, what are the insights that we can extract per location? And we started looking at those. And we produced for, for our customer what we call daily reports. And those were beautiful reports, you know, big few pages reports with all the products, uh, with their 
uptrend, downtrend, um, flat lines, or whatever. Um, we say well, these are uh, the products that are you know bringing home the, the bacon. These are products that are kind of underdogs and so on. Um, and we started testing different hypotheses on how to uh, how to do their uh, their business. But here comes the first hurdle that we had to face. Um, the managers, the location managers, did not like that. You know, they said that that report is good, actually very good, but it takes a whole lot of time to, to read through that report, uh, let alone understand it, and do something meaningful on top of that. So we said, okay, let's, let's start again, you know, go back to the drawing board. You know, we didn't go exactly back to the drawing board because we had already some insights, but, you know, and, and we already had the data cleaned. But what we did is we uh, started customizing the solution a lot. So first of all, we said, okay, uh, coffee shops are not uh, really the strength here. Here we have bakeries. Here we have somebody who um, sells products that are with a lot shorter uh, expiration dates. Uh, we have something that can be sold whole or per piece. So we customized for that. Um, we integrated with their point of sale software. So we basically uh, eliminated the need for, for the managers to get the data from the previous day, upload it to us, and then see the report. We kind of said, okay, we'll do that automatically. You know, at this point, we basically had some, some trust with the customer. And we built a few other things. We allowed the managers to um, customize their, uh, their products. You know, so they, in case they didn't want to sell all the 40 products, they wanted to sell only maybe um, 30 of them, we allowed them to, to say that. Um, and we went the next step and we said, hey, uh, what is the actual thing that uh, the customer, the location manager does? And it turns out that what they do is order pastries, order products from the manufacturing facility. Um, and that's where they spend their time and they needed help with that. So what we did is actually we said, okay, great. We have the data from the past. We have our forecast. Uh, what we might miss is the inventory, so we created a, a piece where they can enter the inventory, the current stock, and we basically did, okay, here's how much you need to order, taking into account the current inventory, taking into account the forecast for the future, uh, how much they're going to sell tomorrow, and we basically did, here's how much you need to order. No underdogs, no um, uh, high performers, just plain numbers, you know, basically something that they can copy and send an email to their uh, mothership and say, here's how much we want to sell. So uh, what, what happened? Well, a few things happened. First of all, um, locations. Um, we were able to shorten the period in which a new location becomes profitable from about six, like I said, six to 12 months before to about one to two months, you know, two months for a Profitability in a new location, that's that's really awesome. Um, unexpected benefit for both us and the customer was that we were able to get the waste down to under 3%. Um, I don't know what's, how is it with you guys, but we've heard that the industry standard for um, waste is around 10%. Um, we were able to squeeze that pretty much in third, you know, to, to cut two thirds out of that waste. Um, as you can imagine, we improved the profits and we're going to talk more about those later. And we also had a few kind of unexpected um, side effects. The most interesting one for us, and, and, I, and I guess for you, it will be uh, the time we were able to cut of the location manager's day. Before our solution, the manager was spending about two hours per day to go through their daily sales to go through whatever historical data they had and uh, and 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 think about okay how much do I want to sell is this really selling well how is this going so basically they spend about two hours a day planning for the next day um, we were able to cut that time to 15 minutes because right now what they have to do is basically only enter their current inventories at the end of the day they hit a button and we produce a result for them. So, you know, time save, you know, whether they become more productive on the next day because they don't spend that time uh, pondering and being in the office or they do something else instead, that's entirely up to the business, but we save that time for them. And 
Uh, kind of a, an interesting anecdote on that was that in one occasion we were able to uh, predict the demand so well that uh, the, the manufacturing facility wasn't ready to produce that amount immediately for the, for the businesses in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the locations. So that they had to say to certain locations, you know what, we'll produce but not the whole order you order, you know, maybe we'll cut it in half. It turns out that on the next day, those businesses that, uh, those locations that had uh, the same, um, you know, high orders that got cut, were able to fulfill all the sales, but that's a separate story. So we actually were able to surprise uh, even the, the big manufacturing facility that they had. Uh, and now for the, for the takeaways for you guys. So I think, uh, I think this is, you know, why you're here for. Um, some specific quantifiable measures of what is it that you can expect from different impact, different uh, factors to impact your sales. First of all, seasons. Uh, I think you're all aware of that uh, and our quantifiable um, metrics show 50 to 30 to 50 percent difference between high season and, and uh, low season. Um, and, I, and I say that high season, low season because in, in different locations based on Kind of geography based on inside seating or outside seating um, can can vary a lot. Uh, so there is that difference. The weather up uh, day to day can impact you up to forty percent, and and I think you were all aware of that. Uh, and I'm going to you know quantify that a little bit further later. Birthdays um, there can be uh, spikes in the demand for about thirty percent based on on uh, on the specific birthdays that are happening in that day. Uh, days off, I mean, weekends, you've all noticed that, you know, weekends can be up to 40%, 50% in some cases, uh, increase uh, or decrease, I mean, uh, depending on the, on the location. But one of the big um, findings for us was the holidays, the, the things that are um, celebrated, but not with a day off. Um, and, and I'm going to dig much deeper into that, in that specific uh, thing, but that was a huge impact, that is, um, you know, three to four, four-fold increase in demand in certain cases. Um, one additional side um, uh, finding that we had for our customer is that the marketing campaigns that they did were effective only to about four weeks. They were running them sometimes to six weeks, sometimes for you know, a couple of months, uh, but it turns out uh, that they have um, four weeks of kind of meaningful impact. You know, there is a um, definite ramp up time when the marketing campaigns become more effective and then there's definite ramp down um, and that kind of all happens between uh, you know day first and day 28 of the marketing campaigns. We also tested a few hypotheses that turned out to be false. I mean um, some of you have heard that we have um, or rather that the stockbrokers can go crazy or berserk when there is um, uh, full moon. And we say, okay, does that impact the sale of sweets? And we tested that hypothesis, and it turns out that maybe traders go crazy, but you know, shoppers don't go buying more sweets with the phases of the moon, which is you know kind of counterintuitive for us, but um, it is something that uh, is worth noting there. Now let's dig deeper into some of those. The weather impact. Um, that, that's a busy graph, and I'm going to go into a bit more details. But the rule of thumb that we were able to extract from all of this is um, one degree uh, Celsius for, for those of you who are in Europe and two degrees Fahrenheit in, in, in US and uh, uh, that part of the world uh, leads to about 1% increase of sales for um, when weather is really cold, below freezing temperatures. You know, we have that from uh, one of our locations here in Sofia, but it kind of held through for uh, also locations in, in Romania, which is kind of north of, uh, of here as well. Um, interesting though, and, and here's the, the ramp up, you can see it, you know, the temperature climbs and then uh, the sales climb also, you know, look at the, the weekend sales mostly. Um, and then uh, a funny thing happened, around zero there was a flat line, um, meaning, you know, increasing temperature didn't lead to more increasing sales. Now I want to kind of qualify that. That is true, but it will take some measurement specific observations in your specific locations to, to figure those out. Um, fortunately for you, our algorithms are 
fine-tuned to, to detect those things and combined with the uh, weather prognosis, uh, we can actually do something really meaningful for, uh, uh, for each, uh, each location in each business. So that's about weather. The birthdays. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but birthdays are not uniformly distributed across the year. I mean, you would think that every, you know, uh, everybody or somebody is born every minute of every day, but it's not the case. You know, the, the birthdays are not flat. The bars on this graph show the different years. And while the data there doesn't seem too, uh, too disperse or too kind of diverse in, in terms of month to month, if you look at the, at the line, the averages, um, those are the really interesting ones. Uh, the averages show that, for example, a lot fewer birds are happening in April than they're happening in September. Um, and if you take a look at uh, the right hand side of the chart, you'll see that there's almost a full percentage point uh, difference. And that full percentage point uh, difference may mean a few thousand people in, uh, where you live, you know, again, based on, on, on your specific uh, location. So a few thousand people having birthdays in that month pretty much will increase your sales. And that is the 30% the that we're talking about. Um, those are for US birds. Uh, we have the same data for, uh, for UK. Uh, it's, it's broken up per day here. Um, obviously, um, the same pattern is observed here. Uh, and since the data is much more granular, uh, you can see that there's fluctuations between days and weeks and so on. And uh, those are, are, are kind of interesting. And if you want to do planning on your own, you can find the, uh, the birthdays for your specific geography, for your specific location, and use that. That data is usually public. Statistical institutes of every country pretty much produce that data. Or, you know, we can do that heavy lifting for you, kind of uh, take care of your location specifically. Um, birthdays, holidays, or days off, you know. Um, that's pretty, no, you know, much no-brainer. Um, when the weather is good, people are outside, so locations outside tend to get uh, more often hit or closer to park, closer to, you know, outdoor um, uh, places where people uh, walk. When the weather is poor, you know, the reverse is true. Locations inside, inside malls get more uh, traction. Um, you know, we already talked about the weather and, and all of that. Um, like I mentioned, you know, a few of the surprises were the special holidays or the, 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 the things that people celebrate without them having a day off. Um, for example, in Europe, International Women's Day is, is celebrated or kind of at least my, my part of the, uh, of the world. Uh, International Women's Day is celebrated. Uh, and there is another big holiday called, uh, called Name Days. Name Days are, you know, People celebrate their names, um, same patterns of the day. And we saw the specific 300 to 400% increase on specifically that kind of a name day. But think about your holidays, you know, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Super Bowl, March Madness, you know, yeah, I know, sport events, a lot of people want cakes, but some people do celebrate uh, even sporting events with, with cakes. So. Uh, think about those holidays and think about their impact. Look at your data in the past and see what you can find about that. You know, have I had on Super Bowl Sunday a uh, bigger increase of, you know, some kind of, uh, of pastry? Maybe you have, you know, snacks, who knows. Um, but other less known holidays are also interesting like Columbus, Martin Luther King Day, um, Equinox, Solstice. Those can be also correlated. Again, you can do that yourself or, or uh, kind of uh, rely on, on a company like Avery to, to, to bring that to you. The start and the end of the year, of the school year, um, kind of local community um, holiday turned out to also have uh, some, some measurable, noticeable impact. Georgie, uh, here we have an interesting question from James Green. And he's asking in general um, about the temperature changes and their impact on the sales. Is that relevant anywhere or is it just a particular observation for location? Right, so thanks, thanks for uh, James Green for, for the question. Um, um, yes, the, the temperatures do impact all locations, some more than the others. You know, of course, you'll have more impact in uh, uh, Minnesota than in Florida, um, but um, you can uh, check that, you know, if you take your historic data and kind of do that production yourself, 
or uh, like I mentioned a few times already, um, bring us the data and we'll do the heavy lifting for you uh, in trying to correlate that data with that. But thank you for the question. And if you have more questions, you know, lower uh, right hand corner live chat, send them and we'll, we'll try to answer those questions. But back to the topic of um, the cultural and the community holidays. So here's, here's the, the impact of start of the school year for, for Bulgaria. For, for this, is, this happened for this last uh, school year that is almost over. Um, September 15th, working day. As you can see, the working days have pretty much you know, flat volume, but in this particular day, it was like twice as much. So um, try to, to um, think about what are the community holidays and, and kind of try to plan around those because those will have impact on, uh, on, on your sales. And um, if, you, uh, uh, if you know uh, those holidays, great, and uh, you've already uh, tracking them, but otherwise, you know, bring the data and we'll, we'll kind of try to answer that. Um, and the last thing for me, and, uh, and I'll kind of give you to uh, Christo to tell you more about uh, the, the tools, but uh, the, exactly the tools, the tools that we've created while we were building this um, uh, solution for our customers. So um, we managed to extract two specific tools that are applicable to, we think, every pastry and bakery business out there. Uh, first one we called uh, Baker's, uh, A for Bakery's Light. This is something that we've created so that we can quickly take a look at the data without running huge uh, big data processing facilities. Uh, so that's basically an Excel on your, um, on your machine. Uh, and that uh, has the benefit of limiting the waste that you can uh, get on a, a specific cell location. Um, the setup is that you basically do it all by yourself, there's no, no help from us, but it's something that allows you to keep the data uh, where, where it is, at your machine. Uh, and the best part about it, it is um, free. So you can start using it immediately after this, uh, this webinar and see how it feels. Um, another good thing about it is that you don't need too much data. You can have it with one or two, two months sales data. So it's perfect for new locations or it's perfect if you just wanna kind of, uh, you know, uh, try the waters, so to say. Um, the next tool is our, you know, uh, product that we uh, actually are delivering to to to, to Nedele, to our customer. It's called A for Bakeries. Uh, it uses a big mathematical model behind it. It runs it in the cloud, so it needs some some uh, more uh, processing power. Uh, and it does what we call full-blown demand prognosis, so it does forecasting. So it can tell you not only what to do to limit the loss, the waste uh, of your sales, but also how to gouge how much you're going to sell tomorrow. Um, the setup of this application is not self-service, so we do a lot of the, the heavy lifting there. We plug in the weather, with the holidays, the birthdays for your locations, um, and uh, we clean the data if there's a cleanup. Uh, we will also integrate with your point of sale software if you have it, or we can, you know, leave you, you know, to, that to be manual process. Um, we can work with really small amounts of data there, about one uh, or two months to about twelve months, but we prefer, you know, more, eighteen to thirty-six months. That kind of helps us get all of the seasonal uh, uh, aspects of it. That helps us get um, kind of even unknown holidays. Um, that, that can, can impact your sales. And um, the price, it's um, $99 per month per location. So we think that for the price of, you know, three, four cakes a month, uh, you can optimize the sales for your location. That, we think that's a, that's a fair trade. So uh, if you're interested, um, call us after the, uh, after the webinar and we will hook you up with, um, with, uh, with a trial. So with that, I want to give uh, the floor to Christo, who will, you know, give you the, uh, uh, the rundown on the applications. George, thank you very much. An excellent part. I will try to be at least as best as possible, but I'm going to present you a little bit more Excel, so it's not so excited. So, demos. Let's talk about uh, A4 Bakery slide. So, this product was developed uh, in, as an internal tool to help us uh, during the development of the fully scale product. And uh, generally, it was helping us to identify the starting conditions. So, 
something like a threshold. If our prognosis, our forecast is worse than this purely statistical Excel sheet, obviously we're not doing the job. Uh, but figure out that uh, we figure out that uh, actually this tool is uh, could be very helpful to anybody. Uh, and it's really yes, it's it was the product developed from us internally, but we decided with uh, that announcement to uh, to publish it to the public and to be uh, everybody to have access to that. So what you are going to get with that product? First, you will be able to find the best minimum so, stock quantities. Sorry, to interrupt, uh, there is a question here from somebody, um, Nikolai Nikolov. What would it take for me to be able to? assess on my own how such external factors impact the sales in my uh, patisserie. Uh, okay, because I've done it uh, for some of the locations myself, uh, it took me about a month or two uh, really to identify all the corners. Here is a very tricky part, especially with the special days, holidays, which are, for example, some of the name days in Bulgaria, they are not hooked to the particular date of the year. Uh, but they are moving to, with the uh, with, uh, uh, orthodox calendar. So you could expect that on one particular year, that particular name day could be on, uh, for example, 6th of uh, January, but on the next year it could be on 12th of January. So, and when you have to examine such a date, it's not so easy to find these correlations because people are thinking just in the days of the year. Thank you for the question. Uh, so, Returning back to A for Bakery slide, so with this tool you will be able to find best minimum stock quantities you have to keep in your location so to minimize the potential losses and at the same time not to have uh, huge sales, uh, huge waste. Uh, so another thing that you're going to see is that how stock quantities actually affect your monetary performance because when you are experimenting with different strategies you will find that uh, actually, uh, there is a peak you could reach with, uh, with such a statistical approach and even if you try to increase your uh, production and your, uh, your stocks, it actually will not affect your monetary performance even if it's going to get worse and vice versa. And uh, something additional that will help you to identify actually the best sizes for all the cakes that you cut on pieces because you will see later during the presentation that actually the best uh, the size has a very strong correlation to the waste you're generating. So let's talk a, lot, a little bit about the waste. Waste is bad and I believe that everybody agrees with that. It's bad for you as a business, it's bad for the society, even that's bad for the planet because that's uh, a lot of energy that is just consumed, something was produced and after the throne and nobody likes that but i would say that there is an opposite point of view that the waste is good well, why is it good for any business that is trying to be as much as profitable uh, actually if there is no waste there is a very hard to detect what the really customer demand is what that means that if you don't have waste actually you have uh, losses because uh, some of the people that came to your, uh, your bakery and asked for, for, for a particular uh, cake, for example, they, they were not served. And at the same time, it's very, uh, very expensive exercise you to start tracking all that and really to be able to, to, to get all that demand. So, from that perspective, waste is good. The reality is that small amount of waste is good. So, you have to keep the waste just a little bit above the demand, just to ensure that you face and you are able to serve to all the demand you have otherwise if you're under actually you're getting in spiral what that means if you are having under under supply, uh, under supply your uh, your vocation that generally will mean that less and less people will come just because they are not finding their cakes and if they start not coming to you actually you find that your waste again is rising up and if you try again to minimize it, you're just going to reduce and reduce and reduce the quantities just because you can't find this good balance to have a little bit of waste, but not much. So, and here I'm going to switch to, to, uh, to our Excel, that is uh, uh, A4 Bakery slide, and we'll show you how you could, what you could achieve with that. So, uh, the Excel is actually not that one. Let's use. Uh, 
Okay, so that one. So, uh, the Excel has several sheets and these sheets are uh, actually designed based on the workflow of the process you have to work here. So, on the very first sheet, here you're entering uh, your SQs and your uh, details about the cakes and the pieces you are uh, selling. So at the very first uh, 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 at the very, very first column, actually you are entering SQ. For those that didn't know what SQ means, SQ means uh, something unique, unique identifier for all uh, for any of your product. So this could be text or number that doesn't matter. So let's put a number here. So second column is SQ piece. So here for any products that could be cut any cakes that could be cut on pieces and sell on pieces, you have to enter the corresponding SQ. So let's assume that this one. And the item name, so the report will be more uh, readable. So nice cake, let's say. Here you're in column D, you're entering the number of the pieces you, you cut from this from the whole cake. And if there is the cake is sold only as a whole, you have to get to enter one, but if there could be cut on pieces, you could get the, the number of the pieces here. So, shelf five days. Shelf five days is very important, so the algorithm to be able to, based on the, based on the sales, to, uh, to, uh, to evaluate what exactly the waste was, or the opposite. And the meaning of the shelf wife day, in particular, there is a, a little bit of restriction here. So we're working with the shelf wife days which are between one and three. Generally, what that means is that if your one is when your cake is delivered and available on your shop today, you have to throw it on the next day over the evening and going further for uh, two days shelf wife, three days or four days shelf wife. So, Cost of the piece. Cost of the piece is used to be able to monetize uh, actually what are your potential losses based on the waste. And uh, here you could enter uh, your number and the retail price, so the end price that the customer is paying to you, uh, which will help you to find what the possible amount of, uh, uh, of losses you might have, etc. So, here, of course, I prepared a data not to enter everything manually and I will use real life data for March from our customer. It's anonymized uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of SQs and uh, item names and the uh, cost and uh, prices, but it will show a really good Ex real life example, it's just not let's say fake or something like that, it's something just produced for the, for the demo. On the second sheet, it's very simple, you have to, uh, you have to enter uh, your data for the past month, for example. I'm going to use exactly March in that case. So, uh, here again, it's very simple, you have a three columns, so the date, the SQ, and how many items were sold on that day. Uh, by the way, it's, if you have the data not aggregated for day, uh, the algorithm is going to do that for you. It's not needed from you to put any additional effort. And the fourth column is name item, but that's optional. We really not rely on that. We rely the, on the previous uh, sheet where all the definition of, uh, of you is uh, presented. So again, let's took uh, a real life data and to see how all this is working. Okay, so here we have, we pasted, uh, we pasted the data and we have to go just to the next screen, which is the main screen we are going to work with. So after you populated the data and, you, uh, uh, and your nomenclature in SQL, you have only to hit the refresh button and calculate, calculation is done. By the way, the calculation could be a little bit different uh, from time perspective just because if you have a slower machine or you're trying to process a lot of data, that's Excel, it's not high performance thing, but it's going to do the work, just give it enough time. And here what we have right now, we have uh, 
a screen where you're seeing all the SQLs, items, etc. And several, several other important things. So, let's start with the suggested minimum stock. So, that's the field you're, you're may, may, uh, going mainly to work with. Here I could put a number that algorithm is going to start uh, supporting as a minimum stock daily. So if it's uh, under that minimum, it's going to, uh, to, to make the forecast that it's going to, to put one more for the next day. And what is happening is that you immediately see that if I'm keeping for uh, K Gargamel or one minimum stock daily, I'm going to have this amount of revenue, $376 and waste of 20, uh, 28 and point ninety one dollars for that particular month. So if in that month I was keeping one minimum stock daily from uh, Cape Gargamel, uh, I was going to have that result. So because it's against the real data, uh, later on I will, I will give, you, uh, give you a comparison with how the real life system performed. Uh, but here is that what you're going to have on your computer doing playing with your uh, with your uh, um, data. So I prepared several, let's say, uh, how to call it scenarios. Scenarios, yeah. So let's do the very first scenario, which is in general, let's minima, let's have a zero uh, loss of revenue. So. I have a so huge supply of all my minimum stock on daily basis, so I will be able to I will be able to uh, support any uh, any potential revenue. So as you see, lost revenue in that case is zero, but of course the trade-off for that is uh, quite a huge waste. So. What we could do, we could say, okay, let's minimize the waste. And here I prepared something like uh, smart uh, minimum waste for that particular month. And I, I'm playing with different numbers. At that moment, you immediately see the following: that uh, the lost revenue, of course, increased, but the waste drops almost to 3.5 percent. Very nice. We managed to reduce only with that simple strategy in Excel our waste. And here we have to take a decision what we prefer to have a little bit of loses of the revenue or to minimize the waste. I prepared uh, another example where, based on, uh, based on my experience, I decided to play with the numbers and to reach something like a maximum that you could achieve with that algorithm. So, with that distribution, you will see that waste is relevantly about 6% and uh, potential loses are below 4%, which is very reasonable. So, without much effort, even without any kind of, let's say, somebody that knows a lot about that location, using that simple Excel sheet, I already managed to put in some order a balance between the waste and the potential losses. So, Let's examine a little bit uh, deeper into that because, as I said, this will be able to give you much more than just balancing these uh, two numbers. Let's play the scenario why some of our, of our cakes, and I really like the kindergarten here, some of our cakes are unable to, uh, to minimize the waste completely. The reason behind that, by the way, Gargamel is exactly the, the same, the reason behind that is their size. Why? Because if I have a demand which is, for example, 12 pieces per day, and my cake is 16 pieces per day, I have already guaranteed 4 pieces waste just because the sizing is not right. Of course, there is a fluctuation uh, on the demand, and you, from time to time you could have a little bit more and all the cake to be sold, but on another day, so it might be in completely opposite. In that particular cake for that particular month, actually the, its size of 16 is guarantee a waste. If you want to reduce the waste to minimum, you put just zero and that means that you stop supplying Gargamel. And of course, if you put a uh, bigger number, so you to minimize the lost revenue, you will have immediate increment to the sales. So, let's say, if I have to, to, uh, to support at least two what is going to happen with my waste if I reduce the size of that cake 
on half. Immediately you see that we see that the waste dropped to zero for the trade-off of just a little bit uh, lost revenue. And I could play with that, uh, with, that, uh, uh, with that number and to see where I will find the balance. That might be an advice for me to revise what amount of cake, what, what amount, what to, to be the size of this particular cake and based on that to develop a new product that has its own uh, same characteristics. Uh, so, as I said, playing with, uh, playing with that Excel and uh, you could achieve a significant improvement of your daily work because it will support your day-to-day -day decisions. And as you see, the best scenario that we achieved here with the balanced uh, code balance strategy is something about six percent, something about six percent of waste. Here I want to show you something, some other numbers which are related with our business efficiency. What we call the business efficiency that generally means what my profit is minus the lost revenue. And if you took a look of the scenarios that we have, actually this balance strategy is providing me with the best. Uh, with the best business efficiency. If we just make a graph from that, let's do this. If we make a graph from that, uh, you will see that even if I increase, uh, even if I increase my support, uh, my supply, actually my general business efficiency will drop. Normally, just because that means that I'm going to have more waste, and the opposite. If I start under-supply under my, uh, my location, again my business efficiency will drop. And again, going back to the number, with this Excel sheet you will be able to achieve something like this in that particular location for that particular month. Of course your locations and, uh, could vary uh, a lot about that. What the real product actually... Christo, before, before we jump into yeah. the real product, um, we have a couple of questions from, from James Green. Uh, so, the first question is um, how your daily insights are better than my more than 17 years of experience? So, so yeah. <laughs> it's a very tough question, it's a little bit provocative. So, uh, are we going to be better than your 17 years of experience? Probably not. By the way, in some cases we are. Uh, recently we receive uh, feedback from our, from our client, one of our clients, that our forecasts are actually a little bit about twice better than the average manager they have, which was a big, uh, big and nice feedback that we get. We are very proud of that and we are very proud with that, our, uh, that our client. But the reality is that not, that's not just about the managers and their quantities, qualities. Just imagine, you have to be 365 days per year to be just on the high level to be able to factor everything that is happening. So, is our prognosis are going to be better than you? Probably not. You have 17 years of experience. But I will, I will say that it's going to save you time, definitely. And it's going to be able you to be a little bit more free. So, to not to be 365 days per year associated with your vocation, even more. Imagine that you want to expand your business. You can't replicate this uh, 17 years of experience. If you want to disperse your knowledge about cake business for 17 locations, it's not going to be very easy. You have to, uh, to start learning 17 new managers with everything you experience. And that will be a very costly and, I would say, long exercise. So, it's a balance. It's, uh, that's, a ra that's a tool that could help you actually replacing part of your work you to be focused on the things that such a tool can't replace, like monitoring better your staff, um, having uh, increasing your communication with your clients, getting direct feedback, and etc., etc. So it's uh, it's something like that. So going back to the comparison for that exactly particular amount and how the uh, this sophisticated algorithm that is working behind that with uh, all the prognosis. Actually, this, uh, our algorithm was able to achieve uh, below 2% waste for the same period 
and in the same time it guaranteed all the sales that happened in that period. Actually, as you see here, here is one of the special days, which is International Women's Day, that happened exactly into that month. And the algorithm managed to, 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 uh, to face all the demand that is happening into that day. The funny part actually behind this graph is that the biggest waste that happened on 21st and 22nd of March actually were direct impact from a decision of a manager, he, by some reason on 17 and 18, he decided to increase the, the supply of the location, actually quite, with quite huge, he, he uh, increased the location supply, supply with 20 more cakes, but the reality happened that these 20 more cakes resulted into that waste and we examined the data and we saw that actually the algorithm was very well fit to the, the demand. So, from time to time, even the machines could be better than human, but uh, we are the people that are inventing the machines, so it's the opposite. It's it's really a tricky question, returning back to the question just before that. And, and, and with that, I will say that I finished. Uh, and I have a second question, which is kind of related to that. Uh, I, um, again, from James Green, um, he's, he asks, uh, you talk about forecasting on a daily basis. Can you do it hourly? Oh, yeah. Hourly, it's, it's uh, actually, again, returning back to uh, Nedele, with, uh, we, we there we have a project and we are able actually to predict the fluctuations over the days because they vary quite a lot. There is a very strong seasonal component, by the way, into that. Uh, and based on this examination of the data and better prediction of where exactly over the, over the hours of the day will be the peak of the demand or the opposite, Actually, you could be a little bit more flexible and to be more efficient with the schedule with the schedules of the personnel, and that's what they're uh, trying to achieve exactly with that prognosis. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Um, I think this is all we have prepared for you guys today. Uh, we we let's just uh, so. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for, uh, for joining us today. Uh, we think that you've enjoyed, or uh, we hope we enjoyed the, what you saw today uh, for, uh, from us. Like I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the talk, we are going to send you a package with all of the, uh, you know, the, the goodies from today, the Excel, um, the, the PowerPoint presentation, the recording of the session so that you uh, can rewatch it again later and uh, just uh, one final word from, from, from me um, here's the, the place where you can get some of the data that, that we showed you today about the, the birthdays so with that thank you very much and uh, I want to say a final word we, I want to say uh, thank you to our, our client Nedelia because uh, uh, we are staying with them for almost eight months and uh, they are pretty happy from our performance and we are pretty happy with the fact that they decided to, uh, to delegate that complex thing to a startup eight months ago. So, uh, and uh, join this, our work jointly actually resulted into this and this product that are on your attention on the screen. Right. Thank you and hope to work with you soon. Bye bye.